In the early hours of May 11th last year, fire broke out at 18 Victory Road. In the house was Mick and Mairead Philpot and their six children. Where's the fire? Yeah. 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 The fire was quickly spotted by neighbours. When I looked out the window and I seen the fire up the door, it was it was instant. I just went with Robert and said, oh, the house is on fire. Naturally, I thought that our house was on fire. And he said, no, Mick's house is on fire. We've got to get the kids out. You know, it's kids over there. So with that, my brother's gone. I ran up the street and I got to the front and I just, it was just a wall of fire. I was thinking, oh my God, that's gone, that, 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 that's grows so fast. With the front door on fire, the only way through to the back of the house was over a caravan. Another neighbor, Daniel Stevenson, was also there trying to get up to the back windows. Mick Philpot was on the phone in the backyard. As soon as I jumped over the caravan, I said, where, where, where's the kid, mate? They're all in the back bedroom. And when I climbed the ladder, I noticed that the window was smashed. And I tried to shout through the window, but it was... It, how's it easy to say? It was like putting your mouth around an exhaust pipe of a car. I didn't go into the house. I was on the top of the caravan. There was a side window at the top of the caravan. Smoke was coming out of there, and it was more smoke than fire. You know, mm. the smoke was black, thick smoke. Can you see Kevin Michael? Can you see any flames? Oh, I can see smoke. I can't see anything else but that smoke. Beaten back by the smoke, Jamie began looking for another way into the house to rescue the children. I was running around this kitchen, this conservatory. Trying to, trying to get in, just trying to get forward, forward, forward. Thinking there's, there's, there's little kids upstairs. Try and get. Four minutes after receiving the first emergency call, the fire crew had arrived at the front of the house. Because of where the fire started at the foot of the stairs, and the fact the fire spread up the stairs, in effect, cut off any um, exit route for the children. So essentially, anyone up there was trapped and there was no way they could get out. Once they went into the house, they were met by a very thick wall of black smoke, could barely see the hand in front of the face. The smoke had hit the ceiling on the first floor and, and banked all the way down to almost floor level. At this point, the temperature had been rising as well considerably. Just to the top of the stairs, there's a bedroom almost straight in front of you. Um, that was the first room they went into, and in that room they did find one child. Jade was the first child to be brought out. She was carried down and laid on the pavement, where desperate attempts were made to revive her. They went into the next room, where they found two more children. One by one, her brothers were brought out and laid side by side. When I come round to the front, it was, it was like a war zone. It, it, it was like, whoa, you know? That's when you realised how severe and how bad, bad it was. Yeah. You've got emergency services here, there and everywhere running around here, and you've got babies coming out. The six children were rushed to the Royal Derby Hospital, but it was too late to save 10-year-old Jade. Mick and Mairead's only daughter, and their four younger sons, John, Jack, Jesse, and five-year-old Jaden. The only surviving child, Dwayne, was critically ill. He was moved to Birmingham Children's Hospital, where family and friends gathered. We went in to see Dwayne, and it was just heartbreaking to see him there fighting for his life. Within hours of the fire, 18 Victory Road was declared a crime scene. The 
fire starting behind that front door, two possible causes. Was somebody poured petrol through the letterbox or has petrol been used from inside the property to set the fire? Officers immediately questioned Lisa Willis, Mick Philpott's former mistress. She had lived at the house with Mick and Maraid, but had left with her five children just three months earlier. She was quickly ruled out. The local community struggled to come to terms with the unfolding tragedy. Two days after the fire, Duane became its sixth victim. The morning we went to see the children in the morgue, we met Mick and Maraid outside. They asked if we'd go with them, and I said yes. Um, it's probably one of the worst things I've ever had to do in my life. It tore me apart. It tore me apart. Six beautiful little children just taken away like that. And... Mick Philpott told police that he wanted to talk to the press. His main message was that he wanted to, to give this vote of thanks publicly. First of all, I want to thank my three oldest children because they helped us to cope with what's going off. But his behaviour that day concerned and dismayed those watching. I met with both of them in a private room, obviously, to, to brief them, and he seemed to come in very, very jovial, really, a very jovial manner. Um, as though it was some kind of game, it appeared. And of course, the poor firemen, the police, the ambulances, the doctors, the nurses. There did the not seem everybody. to be that genuine level of grief uh, and the distraught nature of how people feel when they've lost a loved one. We can't express our gratitude to everybody. The first things that are out of your mouth should be, please help us, somebody knows something. It was never, ever once mentioned. If that was me, I'd be begging, please help me. Somebody knows something. I've actually been down to my, our, our home, and what we saw, we just, we just cannot believe it. There was no heartfelt appeal for that information to come in. Find who's killed my children. It just didn't come. I took an early decision then to, to take them out of the room. <laughs> I was somewhat behind, and as I came through some double doors into the corridor leading to the room we were using, uh, I found him collapsed on the floor, um, surprisingly. I can only describe it really as being childlike uh, and akin to uh, a child feigning collapse or feigning illness. Uh, um, playing around on the floor. And within a matter of probably 10, 20 seconds, he was back up on his feet and, and into the room, laughing and joking as he was before. Two weeks later, the couple were arrested over the deaths of their children. Mick Philpott played out much of the unfolding tragedy as he had his life in front of the cameras. Ann Widdicombe got to know Mick Philpott in 2007 when he took part in a show for ITV. Hello, I'm Ann. Hello, Ann. I'm Mick. Pleased to meet you, love. Very pleased to meet you. Mick Philpott loved celebrity, loved being on television, even if he was being cast as the villain of the piece. He just loved it. Mick Philpott has a wife, a girlfriend... He had first courted the attention of the local media two years earlier when he had demanded a bigger council house for his wife, his mistress, and nine of his 16 children. Well, people could say it's my own fault for having so many kids. I say it's my life, I live the way I want to live it. Unemployed and with the family claiming £25,000 a year in benefits, Mick Philpott was dubbed Britain's biggest scrounger by the national newspapers. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Today I want to discover the man behind the headlines and uncover the truth about the guy who has been branded Britain's biggest scrounger. Appearances on Jeremy Kyle and This Morning followed as his notoriety grew. But the papers are calling him Shameless Mick. He shares... I think he was always very aware of PR 
and his image and what he wanted to portray. You believe that you're being unfairly treated by the media? I'm definitely being unfairly treated by the media. He did not even try to see himself as others saw him. Because Listen, you're going to criticise my family, pal, and my kids. I'll criticise you as much as I want. Sorry, this is a free me. country. When did I... I... Because all that mattered was Mick Philpop. Welcome to my world. Mick Philpot thought he had it all. His wife, Maraid, and their children shared the house in Victory Road with Mick's lover, Lisa Willis, who can't be shown for legal reasons. Jesse. I'm happy. I've got my two wives here, which I say two wives, not one, and I've got my kids and I've got my family. That's all I care about. Nothing else. <laughs> Don't see you saw them. Don't see you saw them. Can I just get the... If I could get the, the, the distribution of children... Right. Is I've that got right? three with me first marriage. Yeah. Two with another young lady. Five with Maraid. Yeah. Four with Lisa. And one with another young lady. And right. Two on the way. So that's 15 now. Plus and two on the way. Plus one when I was in the armed services, which I've never, never met. Get out. Mick wanted to swap his three bedroom council house for a larger property. Get out. But Derby City Council wouldn't rehouse him. So he took his complaint to his local ITV station, believing it would embarrass the council into helping him. I think I, I should be allowed a bigger property. Because I'm unemployed, I should be getting every bit of help from the council. Oh, yeah, Dobson Council, blah, 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 will help Mr Philpot as much as possible, right? What have I got to do to get somebody to, to actually listen? It's not my fault, because at the end of the day, it's down to the council to be able to sort us out. We're just going round in a vicious circle. Derby City Council didn't give him the home he wanted. But Mick didn't let this interfere with his plans to have more children. Where does it end then, Mick? Where does it end? At 25, 18, 19? What's, what's going to happen? Well, I don't see what it's got to do with anybody else. How many kids I have? I can have as many as I want. In February 2007, Mick's wife, Maraid, gave birth to his 17th child, Jaden. His lover, Lisa Willis, was heavily pregnant with his 18th child. At this present moment, I am on cloud nine. I'm buzzing. I just had child number 17. I've soon come to child number 18. There's going to be a lot of people out there that's going to say, oh, look, the scum, the stranded, the shameless Mick has done it again. Well, I'll tell you what, fuck all of you. Because at the end of the day, my life, my wife's life, Lisa's life, we do what we want. We don't care what you people think. At the end of the day, we're happy, so scum a lot of you. One month later, Lisa went into labour. I'm not smart. Hello, love. Guess what? She's ever so big. I can't believe it. And you were off about it. Could have found me as soon as she had it, like you normally do. <laughs> like hours after. Hey, <laughs> and guess what? I've got no abuse, I've got no swearing, I've got nothing from her. Oh, well, you're going See? for me now. By spring 2007, there were 11 children living in the house at 18 Victory Road. He keeps trying to tell me he's religious, but he's not religious. He just reads one part of the Bible, go forth my children and multiply. That's what he's doing. Are you having any more babies? I fucking am. <laughs> I've heard all this, I'll be pregnant in six months' time. <laughs> Mick loved his kids. He built climbing frames in the back garden, trampoline, swimming pool. They had everything they wanted. <laughs> and those lovely children, absolutely lovely and so well behaved for saying there were so many in the house. They were so well behaved children. It, it was just adorable. Sit. Sit. Good girl. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hello. No, I mean, people, people criticise for having a big family. We're not on our own. A lot of people around with big families. It's just that we're highlighted because we ask for a bigger ass. Once again, Mick invited round the local ITV crew. Hello, Mick. Peter Bean from Central News. Oh. Hoping they would champion his bid for a larger home. Good evening. 
He remains unemployed. He still lives with his wife and mistress, and he's still having children. But his plan backfired. Well, it's an extreme case of what's happening, I'm afraid, week in, week out, that people are scrounging off the state, and I just really can't think of any other word for it. I think it's very like shit. Yeah. I think it's a load of fucking shit. I think it's a load of crap. Nothing said about, about the app being overcrowded in the house, is it? You know? I'm fucking annoyed. The fact is, they missed the most important part out. You know, we're living in cramped conditions. Right, I'll kick Lisa out of my ass and let her move back in property on her own, which is going to cost them fucking twats more money than what it's going to cost me. You know? You can't win. Fuck them. I'm going to have some more babies. <laughs> He decided the life that he wanted. He wasn't going to work. Whatever happened, he was not going to work. He worked out a system uh, whereby he could live at the expense of the rest of us, uh, providing there were enough children and individuals in the house bringing in benefit. That, that was the sum total of it. Why can't I get this, that and the other? It's not fair this country's going to pop fine. Uh, uh, Why hang on a minute. I've not, I've not said I can't get this, I can't get you that. A bigger house, Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Right? He saw himself as wronged because he couldn't get a bigger house. He saw himself as somebody who was going to stand up and fight for that, and he liked to be in the public eye, and if he was in the public eye, then he thought this was a good thing. Ah! I'm going to say to you in the council, fuck you all, because if the situation comes to the situation, I will build in my garden. And you can come round the castle, come round and say, well, you've not had planning permission. Fuck your planning permission. I've not had planning permission to have all these kids in this house. So they're breaking the law. So it's going to work both ways. One way or the other, I will get what I want. The cameras revealed a man who was determined to get his own way, no matter what. They also showed the darker side of a man who dominated and controlled the two women in his life. Right, you just tell him what we said. <laughs> so you told her what to say as well? I'll tell you what, I'll say it. Right? You lot are criticising us for being as a threesome. We don't do threesomes. I know that. Full we said stop, that. Right? I thought it was an absolutely bizarre Mairead, Mick and Lisa all living together in one house. It's not something that I could do myself, but Mairead, she seemed happy enough with it and Lisa was happy and Mick was happy with it. He loves us both the same. He don't treat us any different. Where I am married to, I've got his name, but he don't treat us any different. Mairead married Mick in 2003. Will you take my Caroline to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honour her? It don't bother me that I'm not married. It don't bother me one bit. I mean, I was his bridesmaid, for God's sake. Lisa was 19 and already seven months pregnant with Mick's child on his wedding day. To me, it was their day at the end of the day, but I didn't enjoy the night time because I was pregnant. I was due to drop. Oh, my God. I don't think for one minute he would have ever had Lisa. If Mairead could have put a foot down with him, it would never have happened. But obviously, Mairead did everything what Mick wanted, and he wanted Lisa, so she put up with it. You're happy with the way, yeah. the, the way things have worked out? Yeah. And the relationship that the uh, threesome works, <laughs> works OK? It's not the th like a threesome, but yeah. It's, but you have to share him. I'm happy the way it is, yeah. And you're happy to share him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Just explain to me um, how, in your mind, this this whole house thing works. Works like a normal family. Well, there's three of us in the house, but it works like a normal family. Works. Where is the dignity in two 20 year old something women allowing a man twice their age to have sex with them? Explain to me. Well, is that not, not sexist? No, he's not doing it behind my back. Lisa exactly was your bridesmaid at your wedding! <laughs> Mick had a caravan by the side of the house where he slept each night, first with his wife, then his lover. Now, normally, this caravan's rocking, 
if they're not come knocking because this is where it all happens. As you can see, this is a nice, um, nice big king size bed. This is where the uh, the action takes place, if you know what I mean. I'm not going to say too much about it, but yeah. One night I'll have Maraid in here, and then the next night I'll have Lisa in. Um, I used to say to Lisa and Maraid, I don't know how you can live like this. It's disgusting what you're doing. But they used to sort of like laugh it off. You don't find it strange when of a Monday or Wednesday or whenever it is, can I, you know, he's in the caravan with Lisa. No. Why do you think most people are, are pissed off with you? Jealous. Of what? Me living with two girls. That's all it boils down to. That's all boils down to. How do you choose who gets it? I don't, I'll serve both, both of them. If they both want it in the same night, mate, I won't take one without the other because so, that's... Can I ask you another question? Yeah. I'm going to ask you this. Go on, mate. Do you have threesome? <laughs> I knew that was coming. No. no. Never you, had a threesome? No, you know that. <laughs> I have, but uh, not with these two. Mick's always been a player. From the day I know him, he's been a player. I say, you're born with a dick between your legs, not just a pee out of, so I'm going to use it. Just so, say, like, for instance, I went out, and there was some nice young lady, and she gave me the eye and the come on, and I knew she wanted it. I'd oblige, because I'm a red hot blooded male at the end of the day. And I'm not going to, I don't even know my wife's listening, I ain't going to turn it down. We'd go out for a drink most weekends. He'd have a laugh, he'd have a joke. If there's a woman there he fancied, he wouldn't think twice of chatting her up, even though Lisa was there or Maraid. Would you be happy, by the way, ladies, for wife number three to come into the environment? No, I don't think it, it will, it'll happen anyway. But if it did, how would you feel? It's not up to me, is it? It's up to him at the end of the day. It's his trousers. If people want to criticise me, I'll criticise them. Because it's my life, my choice. And let's be honest, at the end of the day, there's thousands of men out there who would love to be in my position. Mick Philpot had created a world in which his wife and lover were subservient to his needs and desires. When Lisa broke away, Mick's world imploded. It would prove the catalyst to a sequence of events that would end in the deaths of six of his children.